know, we all have how we got to where, and this is so funny because so many people, Al, come into our business through Toastmasters. And I, when I was in college, this is, this is when I knew I had something, like you said, that, that connected with the world of speaking. And I did an independent study. I was the first one. It's called Center for Contractual Studies at Columbia College because I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I ended up getting this weird major going where I decided to do a fundraiser one semester for um, the Multiple Sclerosis Society, which was great training because I had to organize all this and that. And at the very end, I had to do a presentation and open it up to the student body. And so I needed funding. So I got in the Columbia phone book and called every civic organization. And there was one and this is how ignorant I was. It was Toastmasters. And I said, why would people meet about toasters? <laughs> because I remember my grandmother's house, she had Toastmaster. And I said, well, this is, this. I guess everybody has a toaster. So right. surely this would be a way I could appeal to them and, and, and maybe they'll let me. Now, some groups said, no, I'm sorry. We don't, we have a full agenda. We can't accommodate you. These were the nicest people after I called and said, I have a presentation I'd like to make. And is there any way? Oh, yes. Why don't you come tomorrow night? And I just had no idea what I was doing. So I stood in front of these people. I remember it was a banquet table. It was like it was a place in Columbia, just a little old hotel. Um, I can't remember the name of it. And I they all, I walked in and they all clapped. And I thought, well, this is weird. And I thought, they're going to give me a bucket of money. So I did my presentation and they clapped and clapped and clapped. And all of a sudden, um, I'm waiting for the check or thank you. We'd love to give you support. And I saw them writing notes and I thought, man, they are really going to give me a lot of money. And one by one, they asked, they said, please sit down. I said, oh, OK. And I'm going, what is this? And the first person said, you know, your opening was good. But the closer, you needed a little, you needed to not push your words together. Just just be confident in your clothes. The next person, well, I thought the middle could use some work. I'm going, who are these people? I critique my entire speech. Thank me. I walked out. The only person I knew at Columbia College at that hour was a girl that was a beauty queen friend of mine on the third floor of my dorm. And here I knocked on her door. She came out in her pajamas and I said, Susan, would you please tell me what I just did? She said, girl, that's Toastmasters. They critique your speeches and make you bet. That is my first experience. No kidding. Is that crazy? Did you get any money? Oh, I didn't get a penny. <laughs> I got critiqued and I'm going, what is this? You know, it was the most confusing thing I think I've ever done. You, you want to hear a funny Toastmaster story real quick? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I spoke in several years ago. I spoke in Salzburg, Austria, and of course, Margaret, all, my wife, always looks at my schedule, and she, she goes to the good places. She won't go to, you know, some place that she doesn't think it's going to be fun. And I love her. <laughs> I know. Anyway, so we were there, and I spoke, and a guy came up to me. We had told the group. I told the group when I was speaking that we were going to leave Germany, going over to Austria, and you know, Salzburg, and we we're going to Vienna and all that sort of stuff. And he said, "When are you going to be in Vienna?" I said, well, next week, two or three days. And he said, you're going to be there next Wednesday. I said, sure. He said, would you come have dinner? I thought, that'd be wonderful. I'd be glad to. So we went to the restaurant where he told us to go. And I thought, this would be nice to have dinner with a local couple, you know, learn some more about the local stuff. We got in this room, and there must have been 30 people in there. And they had one big table set up in a square with a big open hole in the middle. Everybody sat around it. It was the second meeting of the Vienna Toastmasters <laughs> and I had no clue. And so they had some table topic. Everybody had to speak on and they gave an object. I don't know if it was an orange or something. I don't remember what it was, but I'm looking at Margaret. I told her, I said, this is so unfair. You know, here I am, here I am a professional. I, this is not fair to anybody else in this room. And so everybody went around, gave me a little two, couple of minutes. And it came to me and I thought I just slayed them. And they got on around and finally got through and uh, they, then they voted. And I'm, I'm sitting there going, you know, I hate to, I hate to win this thing, but I guess it's, 
I didn't even place. I did not get a single vote. <laughs> Margaret came in second. Margaret came in second in the impromptu speech contest in Vienna, Austria. <laughs> so, Do you ever tell that story when you speak? No, Does I haven't, but I have a time or two. Yeah, but it's a lot. I, I just showed you how our ego can just get so completely out of control sometimes. <laughs> well, and uh, boy, I was I was humbled quickly. <laughs> I didn't even get a vote. <laughs>